Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. My name is Danielle Duell, and I will be your MC today for our conference, Disruptive Influences and What to Do with Them. But before we begin, in keeping with the spirit of reconciliation, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we gather today, and to recognise that these have always been places of teaching and learning. Let us all take a moment to pay respect to their elders, past, present and emerging, and to acknowledge the significant role that Aboriginal people continue to play within the QUT community. Ten years ago, if you were going to a conference called Disrupt Disruptive Influences and what to do about them, you could be forgiven for thinking you were going to a primary school teacher's event about what to do with troublesome students. But of course, that is not the case today. Today, the room is full of business leaders, government leaders, ac academic leaders, students, let's say emerging leaders. And may I assume that if you are in the room today, you have been on a journey, a journey of awareness, acceptance and action. You're aware that the very resilience of your organisations and the communities in which we exist and the jobs we perform that allow us to participate in those organisations and communities could well be under threat. This, is a, this awareness is growing. For many of you have been to a number of our events over the past three years as we've, as we've explored concepts of robotics, connected cities, disrupted dining, the future of food, entrepreneurial energy, future driving, future thinking, and many, many more. You've moved beyond awareness to a state of acceptance. We accept that things are changing, but we haven't stopped there. And today, it, again, it's not about focusing on the threats that disruptive influences are bringing to our lives, but it is about moving forward from our states of awareness and acceptance into action. My team and I do a lot of work with organisations to help them build their revenue resilience with purpose-led strategy and innovation. After all, in a world of constant change, organisations with a strong sense of purpose have an advantage of being able to use that purpose as the first filter for all decision making. Asking ourselves and our organisations, could this disruption could this technology, could this opportunity bring us closer to or further away from fulfilling our purpose helps to provide the clarity in a world of constant change and constant choice. But we find the challenge for all organisations and even we as individuals is that whilst we know we should be preparing for the future, so often we are drawn back into the crises and even the comfort of the short-term imperatives of business as usual, tempted to protect and grow what we have and what we know, rather than truly invest in the journey of change that will ensure our relevance and resilience into the future. Tushman and O'Reilly from Harvard Business School say the answer is to have an ambidextrous strategy, a two-pronged strategy, one that requires us to have two sets of eyes, one pair focused on making the most of the present and simultaneously another pair fixed firmly on the future, exploring and creating new opportunities. And all of this requires change. Seth Godin says, change is a word for a journey with stress. You get the journey and you get the stress. At the end, you're a different person or a different business, but both elements are part of the deal. There are plenty of journeys that are stress-free. They take you where you expect, with little in the way of surprise or disappointment. You can call that a commute, or even a familiar TV show in reruns. And there's plenty of stress that's journey-free. In those instances, the stress is a waste. We can grow beyond that, achieve more than that, and contribute along the way. And it's in that spirit that QUT brings you the Real World Futures program. The fact that you're here today is a sign that you are up for the change, 
But to do so, we need to welcome both the stress and the journey too. Before I introduce our first speaker, I have a little bit of housekeeping to go through. If you need to use the bathrooms, they're actually located one level below us on level nine, which you can access via the lifts or the external stairs. In the unlikely case of emergency, please do use the external stairs. And throughout the event today, I encourage you to join the conversation online using the handle at Real World Future and the hashtag Disruptive Influences. It is now my great pleasure to invite to the stage Professor Peter Coldrake, Vice-Chancellor of QUT. We can all thank Professor Coldrake for the fact that we are here today, as it is thanks to his vision back in 2014 <coughs> to create some kind of intervention to equip the broader QUT community for the disruptive influences that lay ahead. Hence, the Real World Futures program was born. Since then, David Fagan, Kathy McCabe, Many of the Deputy Vice-Chancellors of the University and myself have been involved in designing and curating this program of, of events to empower you with insights, examples and connections to create opportunities amidst the changes we are all facing. Thank you for your vision and leadership, leadership Vice-Chancellor. Please make welcome Professor Coldrake to the stage. Thank you. Um, thanks very much, uh, Danielle. Uh, good morning, everyone, uh, and uh, welcome you all here. I also would like to acknowledge the traditional owners uh, and uh, recognise the contribution that Indigenous people play to uh, everything that is QT, the people, the place, the work, the life. Um, this program, as Danielle has said, is part of the Real Futures initiative. Uh, your introduction uh, was very generous. We actually didn't have a clue what we were doing. Um, and I'm sort of serious, because universities, um, while oftentimes seen as um, hotbeds of dissent and so on, are actually quite conservative places. Um, and uh, many of them, many universities of course, have been around for several hundred years, several hundred years and would uh, wish to hold on to that which has worked very well for them for a long period of time. And doesn't that sound a familiar refrain? Um, but you don't have to be an old university to be conservative. You can quickly become a, a, a conservative institution while being young. Uh, and we recognised that we had a, a set of issues um, inside the institution. And they weren't so much selfishly about the institution, though they've come to embrace institution. We were actually worried about what was going to happen to our graduates. Um, because we've always branded ourselves heavily in terms of real world. But we really wanted to ensure that we were likely to provide students with an experience here, which would enable them to not just survive, but actually thrive in this profoundly difficult um, world in which we are. And when we talk about real world, we're not, we have in the past tended to talk about practical and applied and impact and so on. We actually these days are talking about preparing graduates for the world as it really is or as it's becoming. So there is a selfish agenda um, as well as a more noble uh, agenda, if you like, to the development um, of the program. Um, disruption comes with a lot of bad press. Uh, technology, um, as a strong example, a good example, comes particularly with bad press if it's associated with the loss of jobs. But it's, it's, it's the quagmire that's created by, in people's minds by the loss of jobs, forces of technology, globalisation, innovation, all, con all conflated into a very negative picture. And it's not difficult to understand why the community gets a negative picture because where, what does the community experience? The community at the present time, not only in this country but elsewhere, uh, low wages growth, high house prices, high energy prices um, and dislocation. Um, in employment. Uh, it's, it's no wonder um, we as a society have lots to think about and I really agree with what you said about this conference. We're not actually here to just analyse that which is. We're actually here to, um, to think about the future and how we're actually going to work um, together and to try and encourage an environment in which 
we can actually harness the benefits of all the change that's occurring um, for, for the community. We also live in a time, it's a segue to that point, in which the authority of the expert is under threat in a way that it hasn't um, in, in the past, certainly not in the recognisable past, where the, the uh, influence of the authoritative voice can easily be displaced by the noise of vast agreeing opinion um, transmitted by Facebook or whatever it happens to be. Um, so we do have a very challenging environment um, and uh, we at this institution um, certainly take that seriously. I would like to, uh, in addition to thanking everyone for being here, particularly thank a number of partners um, that, uh, that are here today, particularly partners in this journey and I know that our, our first couple of speakers um, are from those partners, uh, from some of those partners, uh, Suncorp uh, and PwC, for example. The, I just wanted to make one other comment uh, about graduates, and I should have mentioned it a moment ago. Um, we're finding, and it's happened really quickly, we're finding, um, and, and there's a lot of evidence, that graduates don't have the same level of competence in institutions that they did have. And one of the very practical reasons that universities have to move and move very quickly is to cater for what students want. And in the same way that we didn't really know what we were precisely doing with the Real World Futures Program, we certainly didn't know what we were really doing when we started to respond to students' um, demands for space and support to enable them to create and to experiment and to set up uh, initiatives and, and you know, every, all the activities that we embrace by the terms entrepreneurship and innovation. So a lot of it does go back to, um, to our students. Uh, I think that uh, I, I should make mention of David Fagan in particular. He is the, choreo the, the choreographer behind this program, and I think I should shamelessly promote uh, the book of his, which was released last night, which in all seriousness um, is a very good bit of companion reading for, for those attending this conference. It's, it's a very good book. Um, it's, uh, it's accessible, it's dealing with potentially dense subject matter, dealing with that material in a very accessible way, um, and I think you should all actually have a look at it, and I hope you will, because whether your field is entertainment information, whether you whether you're involved in um, education or, or interested in um, personal identity issues. Um, the book actually is a, is a very good read um, and uh, it's recommended on those terms. So I wish you all well uh, with the conference today and thank you for joining us. Thank you very much, Professor Coldrake, and we'll give you more details on the book later.